Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that there shall be an executive department under the denomination of the Department of the Navy, the chief officer of which shall be called the Secretary of the Navy, whose duty it shall be to execute such orders as he shall receive from the President of the United States, relative to the procurement of naval stores and materials and the construction, armament, equipment, and employment of vessels of war. The United States Navy was founded by an act of Congress in 1794, and what's interesting and what many people don't know is that after the American Revolution, the Continental Navy, such as it was, had been uh, completely decommissioned. All of the ships had been sold back into the private sector. We found ourselves as a country, after the American Revolution, essentially helpless. Prior to 1776, our shipping had uh, been protected by the mighty British Royal Navy. After independence, the British let it be known that our ships would no longer be protected. The immediate impetus for the Navy was to protect American ships against uh, attacks in the Mediterranean by the Barbary pirates, the Barbary Corsairs. These uh, Corsairs would uh, sally out of their harbors, attack unprotected merchantmen, uh, enslave the crews and uh, take these uh, ships back into, into port. In the same year uh, that Congress authorized the construction of these six frigates, which were to be the first six ships in the fleet, the War Department named six captains to serve as the captains of these six frigates, and one of those captains was Thomas Truxton. Thomas Truxton was an odd duck on this list in that he was the only officer who had not served as an officer in the Revolutionary Navy of the United States. He had captained a privateer, which was a private ship of war. Truxton was the first of the American captains to put to sea with the Constellation in 1798 and immediately began patrolling the sea lanes off the American coast to protect American merchantmen against French privateers. Later that year, the constellation under Truxton was deployed to the south, to the Caribbean, and in January of 1799, the constellation met a French frigate at sea. I continued bearing down on her, and at one quarter past 3 p.m., she hailed me several times, and as soon as I got in a position for every shot to do execution, I answered by commencing a close and successful engagement which lasted until about half after 4 p.m., when she struck her colors to the United States ship Constellation, and I immediately took possession of her. She proves to be the celebrated French national frigate in Sauzant of 40 guns and 400 men, lately out of France. Truxton worked very hard to train his men to um, work efficiently and quickly and accurately at the guns, uh, to work as a team, and um, to use an expression of the time, uh, they, they function very much as a smart ship. Truxton returned with his crew home to, um, to the applause of the nation, and there, was, there were celebrations throughout um, cities along the port. There were um, naval dinners uh, held in his honor. Tom Truxton is such a significant figure in the early history of the Navy that the Navy has chosen to honor him by naming a number of ships after him. One of the Truxtons that came to a, a more tragic end was the fourth Truxton, DD-229, which um, had been on convoy service between New England and Reykjavik, Iceland. And while performing that duty, she uh, ran aground and foundered and uh, sadly lost 110 men aboard. This storm came about, and it was really, really rough. And I took some coffee on the bridge, and I heard the EXO tell the captain that uh, this is going to be a rough one. And uh, the next morning, 
I don't know the time, I understand it was somewhere between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. I thought we had been torpedoed, and I just grabbed some shoes, I hope they were mine, and put them on and ran topside. It was extremely cold, and uh, I was told it was 18 degrees, and uh, everybody began to come topside, and eventually they turned the searchlight on, and when they turned the light on and shined it, all you could see was the cliffs, the ice-covered cliffs, ice and snow, and then the waves seemed like they were coming threes, one wave behind another, and you could see them coming, and it looked like a big mountain coming. And when it come, you would grab the lifeline or whatever and get down because you know it was going to hit. And every time it would wash 15 or 20 people overboard. And finally daybreak came and the weather got worse and it would just pick the ship up and slam it against the rock. And I know I was already cold. When I jumped in, it felt like a one pain, just like he's sticking a knife in you or what. And uh, it just froze me like and I, I was conscious, but seemed like everything slowed down. There was about five of us on the raft. It capsized, and the Newfoundland landers had come down the cliff because Bergeron had made it up the cliff and notified them. Once I got ashore, I just decided to die. I felt so sleepy that felt like I hadn't slept for months. As I got down on the ground, someone reached and picked me up, said, don't lie there, you'll surely die. And he pulled me up and he told another Newfoundland, I said, walk him around. He began to walk me around, it was like a shot in the arm. It, it gave me a, a energy or something. They had this Newfoundland pony, and I remember getting on the sleigh, and everything went blank it seems, so I must have passed out. I wish the world could go to St. Lawrence and take a lesson on love and humanity because if what they taught me, I wish every human being, all of God's children, could learn what they taught me. I would like to say we had a 156-man crew, 110 died, but they died as men, and they were fighting to save the ship. To the officers, the crew of the Truxton, men and women of the Truxton, I wish I could be part of the crew. If I could only be a part of a great ship like this new ship. We often say that uh, they have iron ships today and wooden men, but I know they are iron men. And that ship will live forever. <laughs>